The violence in cities, large and small, well, it is simply overwhelming. 77 people were shot just this weekend in Chicago, 14 of them killed including a seven-year-old girl and a 14-year-old boy. There was a nightclub shooting in South Carolina. That left two people dead, eight others wounded. In Alabama, an eight-year-old boy was killed in a shooting at a shopping mall that left three other people hurt there. And in Atlanta, the mayor saying enough is enough after more than 20 people were shot. Among the victims, an eight-year-old girl kill killed right near the Wendy's where Rayshaw Brooks had been shot. We are doing each other more harm than any police officer on this force. We've had over 75 shootings in this city over the past several weeks. You can't blame that on APD. We understand the frustration of racial roots. We understand. We ain't got nothing to do with that. We innocent. We didn't mean no harm. My baby didn't mean no harm. She made Omega. She made Omega on my birthday. We ain't doing that thing. In New York City, at least 12 people killed in more than 40 shootings and a dozen stabbings. In response, the president saying this in a tweet, in part, federal government ready, willing, and able to help if asked. Let's bring in our headliner, White House Press Secretary Kaylee Mac McEnany. Kaylee, good morning to you. Thanks so much for being here. Good morning. It is Thanks for having me. Horrific to see what played out in some of these major U.S. cities over the holiday weekend: deadly shootings, stabbings, children injured, and in some cases killed in this violence. Does the president see the need to step in at the federal level in these U.S. cities with the violence? Well, the president sees this as unacceptable. Look, that pain on that mother's face—that um, was really hard to watch. To think that. Five children were killed this weekend doing everyday things like going to the mall and in the car with their mother. This is happening across America and it's unacceptable. And what the president has done is his DOJ, under his leadership, uh, has been aggressively looking at prosecutions. More than that, we've had federal protective services that have been in these states as a backup um, to local law enforcement. Ultimately, it's the responsibility of state governors and mayors who have the police power to patrol their streets as uh, ascribed in the Constitution. But the the president's been doing everything on our part from the federal side um, and, and saying that this is unacceptable and it's time for these Democrat mayors and governors to step up because a, no mother should have to experience the pain that I just saw on that mother's face. Kayla, Eric, Sean here in New York. Uh, we've seen all these demonstrations continuing, you know, basically against the police. Yes, there have been horrible incidents, but where are the demonstrations for all these victims? This has been going on in Chicago. For years, there is carnage on the streets of this country from this uncontrolled violence is getting even worse. What does the president say about that uh, and the outrage over yeah, that, this, the, what's happening? That's a great point. Um, where is the outrage for these victims? And in fact, what you're seeing is when you have this outspoken attitude against the police, this defund the police movement, one billion taken uh, from the police department in New York, what you see, and, and AOC saying that that didn't go far enough and we have to defund the police, you see a pulling back of law enforcement. We've seen those mass retirements uh, in New York that ultimately lead to the kind of violence that we're seeing in the streets. I mean, we saw in LA when there was an announcement about funding being pulled from uh, LAPD, we saw an increase in homicides. It was over a 100% increase. So there are real consequences. We need outrage for these victims and for these uh, horrid incidences of violence that we're seeing that should not be taking place in our streets. Kaylee, I want to move on to the spike in coronavirus cases that we're seeing in some areas of the country, uh, in particular in recent weeks. The president said this over the weekend, and it's getting a lot of headlines. Listen. We have tested almost 40 million people. By so doing, we show cases, 99% of which are totally harmless, results that no other country can show because no other country is testing that we have, not in terms of the numbers or in terms of the quality. That's not especially not backed up by Stephen Hahn, the FDA director. Uh, Dr. Fauci is now warning of new coronavirus mutations that cause the illness to spread even faster. Does it help to have the president talk about this disease being harmless in 99% of instances? 
Well, the president was making a factual point that most people will recover from coronavirus who get it, that this a very small fraction of people uh, fall victim to coronavirus in, in a fatal way. Um, and that's because what we're seeing is we have therapeutics, we have ways to treat this. And when you look at the mortality rates across the world, we are far below Italy. Uh, we are far, we're below Germany, we're below France. And it's because of the great work we've put in. This president takes COVID seriously, uh, but we should note uh, the mortality mortality rate and how well we are doing vis-a-vis -vis the rest of the Is he concerned about the spike in cases that we saw, especially over the weekend? The president's monitoring it. Um, he understands that there are fires. He noted that on Friday, but he believes that we as a federal government are equipped to handle those fires. We have great therapeutics, um, dexamethasone and convalescent plasma and remdesivir that are used to treat this, but we're aware of the spikes um, and we are on it here at the White House. Kaylee, do you fear that uh, people perhaps become complacent? Uh, you, you plan a rally, or the campaign plans a rally in uh, Saturday in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. What type of precautions do you think people should take? Should they be wearing masks if they can't social distance? Yes, so the campaign has been very clear that not only will we be giving out masks, but we recommend the wearing of those masks. It's very important to follow uh, the CDC guidelines. And one other note that I would um, put here, just to go back to your other question um, with regard uh, to cases that we're seeing, it's also worth noting what the president consistently emphasizes that at the height of, of COVID-19 back in April, we were testing about 150,000. Now we're testing more than 650,000 per day. So when we talk about these fires, the president noted it's also worth noting when you test at the rate at which we do, you do see a greater number of cases. I want to throw this up. This is the latest on the hospitalization stats since we're talking about numbers and in some cases that is one of the key stats that we look at. Um, the overall cumulative COVID-19 hospital hospitalization rate 102.5 per 100,000. So obviously those key high risk categories are still what we're watching in those cases. Dr. Fauci and others, who is the who does the president listen to the most right now, Kaylee, as we try to work our way through this disease, considering there's still so much that we don't know and we have so much more to learn about it. Well, the president hears advice from uh, all kinds of different doctors, Dr. Hahn, Dr. Fauci, Dr. Burks. The task force comes together, packages that information. The president is regularly, daily briefed on this, um, in fact. But what the president has seen is we as an American society have stepped up. We have the lowest mortality rate, one of the lowest in the entire world. And that's because of American innovation. That's because under this administration, we've led the way on therapeutics. Under this administration, we've put forward $36 billion to find a vaccine and we're hopeful that we'll have that by the end of the year. And it's this president who's teared down bureaucratic barriers to pave the way for America to work its way through COVID-19. And meanwhile, uh, Kaylee, of course, the president gave that speech at Mount Rushmore. We saw that amazing flyover and the celebration on Saturday night from uh, the Air Force, uh, and, uh, the B-1 bombers, the B-52 actually up there. Here's the president speaking about what he says now is a uh, basically a culture war. This left-wing cultural revolution is designed to overthrow the American Revolution. We will never let them rip America's heroes from our monuments or from our hearts. By tearing down Washington and Jefferson, these radicals would tear down the very heritage for which men gave their lives to win the Civil War. Over the weekend, Kaylee, a statue of Christopher Columbus was taken down in, in Baltimore and thrown in the Inner Harbor. The Democratic-controlled New York City Council wants to take Thomas Jefferson out of uh, the City Council. And Tammy Duckworth was asked about George Washington taking down George Washington, and she replied on CNN that, well, she, she, she would be open to hearing the argument. What's the view about taking down George Washington and some others? This is absolute insanity. Uh, America is the greatest country on earth. This nation and the bedrock of freedom put in place by our Constitution and our Declaration of Independence has done more for the world and for the advancement of human history than any country on planet Earth. This is a, a good country, a country to be proud of, and the president will never apologize for what makes America great. Um, but what the president is saying here, and has said quite clearly in his speech, we're not for the ripping down of monuments, the tearing down of our history. And America stands with him. 
71% are against the ripping down of statues and monuments and are quite proud of this country and what we've done to advance freedom across the world. You know, Joni Ernst uh, also grabbed a lot of headlines over the weekends, appearing to distance herself from the president talking about blemishes in our history. Uh, talking about the nation needing to come to come together, uh, but specifically distancing herself from the president when it comes to renaming some of the military bases, uh, peaceful protesters and other things. What does the president have to say about that this morning? Well, the president, again, stands firmly against the renaming of our base. Along with him is 56 percent of this country. Um, this president stands by um, our, our monuments, our great monuments, many of which have been defaced, that of abolitionists like Matthias Baldwin and Ulysses S. Grant and Gandhi, who's the head of, who is known for peaceful protests and was an inspiration to Reverend Martin Luther King. Uh, these mobs have no ideology. They're defacing abolitionists. They're defacing war monuments to uh, black Americans who served in the Civil War. This is unacceptable, and it has no rhyme or reason or no ideological foundation. But considering Joni Ernst's stance, is the president concerned that there might be other Republican members of Congress like her that distance themselves from the president's views on that? No, because the president knows he stands firmly and squarely with the majority of Americans who think it's unacceptable uh, to pull down our statues, to deface Gandhi, uh, and to deface some of the great abolitionists that we have seen either toppled or torn down across the country. Yeah, there even was a, a, a destruction of Frederick Dull Douglass, of a Frederick Douglass statue. Right. Uh, any, update, any update on the Garden of Statues? I, would, I do want to point out that there is the Hall of Fame of Great Americans in Bronx, New York. It started in 1900, and they have busts, 98 of them. Some of them are some of the same people that the president has uh, proposed uh, for his uh, 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 garden for celebration. When do we expect that to open? What's going to happen? Yeah, you know, we hope to see that um, open, and the president has set that date of July 4th, 2024, in the 60 days uh, to look into this. And uh, I think the prospect of having a Garden of Heroes is a great way to make sure that um, America's students know and understand history by commemorating people, excuse me, like Martin Luther King Jr. and Betsy Ross and Susan B. Anthony and these great American icons who made great strides for black Americans in this country and for women uh, in this country. So remembering that and Knowing our history and celebrating these heroes is the one goal the president has in creating this garden. Kaylee, I want to finish off by asking you about a recent tweet of the president's um, going back to Bubba Wallace and the investigation of what he uh, and others at the time thought was a noose. There was a federal investigation of that. It was revealed that it was a, a pull rope for the garage that had been in previous pictures. The president, though, is bringing it back up in a brand new tweet. Has Bubba Wallace apologized to all those great NASCAR drivers and officials who came to his aid? stood by his side and were willing to sacrifice everything for him only to find out that the whole thing was just another hoax that and flag decision has caused lowest ratings ever I, 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 this was never de determined to be a hoax Kaylee is it helpful for the president helpful for the president to bring that back up um, considering this is this is something obviously that the federal investigation weighed in on he's done many interviews since then uh, but to determine it a hoax in a new tweet so NASCAR, I would note, their statement says that this garage pool rope was there since last fall, since far before the teams arrived at these garages. They also said definitively, uh, as the FBI investigation determined it, that there was no mm -hmm. hate crime versus Bubba committed. What the president is making is a broader point, that this rush to judgment on the facts before the facts are out um, is not acceptable. And we saw it with the Covington kids, and we saw it with Jesse Smollett, and now we saw it in this case before but the Kaylee, FBI came on. to that, that conclusion. People are going to quickly point out that that's a, that comparison is not not fair to call this a hoax when he st stands by that he truly believes that that's what it was. Right. Well, the Federal Bureau of Investigation does not stand by that assessment. The president's merely pointing out uh, that we've got to let facts come out before we rush to judgments. Um, and there was no hate crime committed against Bubba Wallace, as determined by the FBI, as noted in a NASCAR statement. Okay. All right, Kaylee McEnany, we will leave it there. We've got to go. Appreciate your time this morning. Please come back soon. Thank you so much. Okay.